Hey there, I'm Jamal Green and welcome to Across Utah 2019. This is the second in the series of shorter hikes for me this spring. This time I'm hiking down the lower Perea all the way to Lee's Ferry over the course of the next four days. Come on, let's go. The river sure is running muddy after the storms from the last few days. Since the water's opaque, it's hard to tell how deep it is. Most of the stuff it's just ankle deep, but occasionally, get up to your shins, maybe the knee. Wouldn't have wanted to have been here last night though when that storm came raging through. I don't think it was enough to make a big flood, but I'm, I'm sure the water went up a little bit. All right, let's keep it going. There's some old cowboy glyphs on this wall. For instance, to Afton Pollock from 1940. This one from 1932, 1908. All right, we gotta keep on going down the canyon. Along this stretch of the Priya, there are these cool little erosion holes in the rock. It's really cool to see them as we walk by. Been hiking for a few hours now and the uh, sun's going behind the canyon walls and it's starting to narrow up a bit. Canyon's definitely changing character now. For the first time, it's actually side to side, all water. Check it out. Looking good. Approaching a nice sunlit part of Narrows. It's looking really nice. Feels like I've been hiking through chocolate milk all day long. Yum. There's a feature on down called Slide Rock. This is not it, but it looks like it's the same type of feature. Where a big chunk of the canyon has fallen off. And there's actually a gap to walk through it. Oh, that's muddy. That's a gonk. All right. All the way through. And out to the other side. Might have to call that Slide Rock Junior. Okay, still going down the canyon. It's getting a bit more narrow up there. Ooh. Stuff kind of looks eerie. Looks like a hundred different ghost faces staring back at me. Oh, people, don't do this. Don't do this. No, no, but no. Uh -uh. Okay, now we're approaching slide rock proper. You can see it's just a big chunk of rock split off and has fallen down. So what do you think? Do we go under it or around it? Under it or around? Let's go under. Day one, let's go. 
This is definitely the narrowest section yet. It's not much over knee deep, but when it comes, it comes at a surprise. I have a feeling we might be at the confluence right here. Unless it's just a gully. Nope. That is Buckskin Gulch, folks. So we are officially at the confluence right there. It's the Korea. And that's buckskin. Okay, we'll come back tomorrow and I'll show you more of the buckskin. But for now, we need to get downstream a little ways to find a camp. What's exciting about this stretch of the Priya is I've never gone beyond this corner right here. I've done the buckskin three times and gone out to the White House trailhead, but I've never gone down the Priya. So this is gonna be all new to me. I love it. Morning day two. Camped here on high ground, uh, just a little ways below the confluence, and I was glad to be on high ground. It actually started raining last night. Turned out not to be much of a storm, and the sun is shining today, so all is good. So today we're going to head back up and check out the buckskin for a little bit before heading down canyon. Pretty nice little campsite. Overlooking the river in the canyon. Big walls. Okay, here we go straight out of the river. We're gonna let it settle and we'll take a look at it here in a bit. So here's the muddy Perea water after settling overnight. Now we're gonna try to extract that top half and filter it for some good water. And from that muddy river came this nice clean water. Hard to believe, tastes good too. Back at the confluence. The clear water from the buckskin meets the muddy water of the Perea. All right, so we are back above the confluence and actually in Buckskin Gulch now. Doing a side hike just to show you a bit of this canyon, which is the longest slot canyon in the world. So here at the very end of the canyon, it's actually kind of open. And these are the two safe campsite so you can camp in the lower end of buckskin. There's one up at that trail on that bench and then one higher up there on that bench. But then right above this, yeah, there's no safe camping for like 13 miles. So anyway, here we go. I'll give you a preview of it. Okay, we're just leaving the camping area and already the canyon is closing down. Take a look up there. It's pretty amazing, huh? It's actually still quite chilly this morning here in the canyon. Thirteen point eight miles long. It's pretty crazy. Just goes and goes. And this is just a preview. Uh oh, coming up to an obstacle. Gonna have to go under this rock. By obstacle, I mean we just have to lean down a little bit and go under all of this. Not too bad. We are getting close to a real obstacle though, but uh, I'll show you that when we get there. Check it out. So we'll go down through here. 
through this little cubby hole. So we are approaching the one and only real obstacle in the buckskin. And that is called the rock fall. Which, I bet you would have never guessed, is where a bunch of rocks have fallen into the canyon. Way above. There are these moky steps over here, but it's a pretty sketchy route. Or we're gonna go through the rabbit hole. Right through here. So I have to go down, get low, and then start the climb up. Through here. At times this is blocked, which means you have to go over the top, which is a lot tougher. All right, and now the biggest part of the climb is to get up this guy. Oh, it's slick. Here we go. And up. And over. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm on top of the rock fall now. You can see the moky steps over there. A lot of people will rope down through this middle section. Or the rabbit hole is behind this big boulder. That's how I got up here. For uh, hikers coming down the buckskin, this is really the only big obstacle they have to face. Well, except for possible pools, which they'll have a lot of this time of year. A lot of cold, dark pools, but uh, otherwise it's just this one climbing obstacle. Which isn't too bad as long as the rabbit hole is uh, free. Okay, that's all for my side excursion up Buckskin Gulch. Now it's time to get back down out of Buckskin and start heading down the Priya. Okay, let's go. Okay, we are down out of the buckskin, back to the confluence, and now it's time to go downriver. Let's go. Joined up with two friends now to make the rest of the trip down to Lee's Ferry. We're passing underneath the second large alcove. Check it out. Cool canyon. Still making my way down the canyon. The river is still really muddy. Still the high walls. Nothing really new to report, but I thought I'd check in because I've been hiking for a few hours now. Day two, still walking in chocolate milk. Another nice section of narrows. Walking along the trail right here, and who do I see waiting to greet me? But this guy right there. Yikes. That's crazy, that's two in five days. Something about being around the Perea, whether it's upper or lower, I seem to see rattlesnakes. Okay, still walking. Okay, this feature is called the first crack. There are four cracks going down the canyon, just lateral faults to the canyon. And they serve as good guideposts as you go down. Day two. This would be so much easier if I didn't have to come back from the camera. Interesting geological formation. Fins or ribs in the rock. Those by cracking or fractures, faulting. There's one there and then there's even more over here. We are at one of several abandoned meanders along the Perea. See the river used to cut through that way. There's an alcove back in there and it'd go around this Big, what's a stone island right now? And used to come out down there. See where those trees are and by my two hiker friends. But once upon a time, the river decided that's too far to go. I'm gonna take this little shortcut. So it carved through the canyon and this is what we have today. Wow, that sun is bright. I know what you're thinking. What happened to the river, Jamal? I'm actually up in an abandoned meander right now, hiking around, checking it out, and uh, headed back to the river. Now we're getting up close. 
go through some shrubbery. Hopefully won't see another rattlesnake in here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's a little thicker than I would have liked. And with that, we are back to the river. We are now approaching the third big alcove. Kind of our last guidepost before we reach Big Spring. And we have a bonus alcove. It looks like alcove number four on the left side of the river. This one was not mentioned by Kelsey or on the map. Pretty cool. Pretty cool crack in the mountain too. We've arrived at Big Spring. Yeah, it looks great. Lots of clear flowing water and even two spigots to choose from. That one over there or this one over here. Good stuff. A nice camping area right nearby. Morning of day three, camped by Big Spring just before second crack and all is good. Continuing down the Perea and if all goes well, we'll be off the trail at Lee's Ferry by afternoon tomorrow. Let's go. Can notice the uh, color of the rivers changed a little bit by today. It's no longer running as red and it's more of that milky olive. It's a little more traditional for the Perea. We're at the second major fault, known as Second Crack. It's a second of four as we continue down the river. Coming up to another major alcove. The walls are just so high down in this part of the canyon. As I mentioned earlier, I synced up with a few friends for this hike. And I decided not to do a big long hike and instead a series of shorter hikes. I took this opportunity to join a few friends down the lower Perea because it's kind of a hard permit to get. And fortunately they already had one. So I jumped at the opportunity. And uh, yeah, it's a different experience, but it's, it's fun. It's fun in its own different way to be hiking with a group instead of solo. But uh, have two more days to go so we'll see if we're all still friends by the time we're done i'm sure we will be okay let's go somebody lost a feather okay i'm under the next big alcove just one of those places it's impossible to capture on video just so humongous this part of the canyon is called the goosenecks Maybe that was a goose feather. Not really. It's definitely another great section of canyon right here. Check this out. See why they call it the goosenecks. Back and forth and back and forth. I don't know how many places there are called the goosenecks on the Colorado Plateau. But I bet it's close to a dozen maybe. It's quite a few I'm sure. Wow, check that out. <laughs> this is just so crazy cool. And again, I know uh, the camera is just not going to capture this. It's just these soaring walls are just so amazing. It makes me giddy. I get very excited in places like this. A lot of people talk about just the buckskin and the confluence area of the Priya being the best part. And they kind of ignore this lower section of the Priya. That may be true. That might be the best, but I don't know. This is all pretty amazing. Just look at that. 
Brings me to a point that uh, I get some criticism for making these videos that I'm overexposing these places. And I, I don't really buy that. Um, my videos, I, I mean, I hope they inspire some people to come out and experience it, but I hope it's a lot of work to get out here. So the people who put in the work to get out here, I hope appreciate it enough and become warriors for justice to help us preserve these areas because they are definitely worth preserving. And uh, I should mention to be here, you have to poop in a bag. So if you're not willing to poop in a bag, you should not be out here because human waste through the narrows is one of the biggest contaminants. So, uh, so take that word of warning before you pack your bags to head out to the lower Perea. But uh, otherwise, the truth is, a large portion of the audience of my uh, videos are actually people who aren't able to get out here. I'm, I'm always inspired by the people who comment that they enjoy watching my videos just because they can't or can no longer get out here and do what I'm currently doing. So they like living vicariously through me. So I appreciate those comments a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm happy, I'm happy to do it for you. Uh, okay, so that's all I have to say for that now. We better get to hiking because we still have a long ways to go, a long ways to Lee's Ferry. So uh, let's go. We are out of the goosenecks and to the third crack. So only one more crack to go. Something happened here and I'm guessing it did not end too well for the owner of these feathers. Yikes. I've been smelling this as I go down the canyon. Don't know what it is, but maybe I can look it up later and tell you guys on the video. Just this bush that's in bloom and wow, it smells amazing. Okay, gotta keep walking. Canyon is starting to change character a little bit. It's starting to widen out. A lot more brush on the sides of the river now. We have reached the fourth and final crack. That side and that side. So from here on down the river, we will be crack free, we hope. It's in this part of the canyon that old rancher Adams made a route out of the canyon. He actually tried to create a pump system to get water up to the plateau for his cattle. Okay, we are at Adams Pump, or what's left of Adams Pump. Let's take a look here. And it would, in theory, suck water out of the river and then all the way up to the rim of the canyon. It did not succeed in the way he wanted it to, but still got to like him for trying. It's a long ways up there. Seems like it would have taken more than one pump. But again, I'm no uh, civil engineer or rancher for that matter. In the mini springs or mini seeps area, possibly the biggest flow I've seen so far. Uh, approaching rather canyon and uh, noticing a lot of Russian olive and tamarisk all of a sudden. Hate both those trees. Invasive species should not be here. Luckily, I'm not having to do any bushwhacking. I'm just following the river, but uh, yeah, not fun plants. So anyway, we're gonna keep it going. Taking a side hike up to Rather Arch. The arch is in sight now. It's a big gash up on the wall. Okay, we've made it up under Rather Arch. Check it out. It's humongous. It's actually, I think, the fifth largest natural span in the U.S. Let's see, Landscape Arch, Kolob Arch, Rainbow Bridge, Sipapu, Sipapau. <laughs> Natural Bridges, Stevens Arch. It's at least in the top 10. It's in there somewhere. Here's another view of the arch from down below on the up canyon side. Again, rather arch. Just no way to capture it all in video. It's just so massive. 
Day three is winding down. Still walking down the Perea. And uh, oh, hey, it's Mr. Shadow. Mr. Shadow, what are you doing? You're in the river, buddy. Get out. Uh, okay. Still a long ways to go. Gotta get to camp, find a spring, and then all will be good. Isn't that right, Mr. Shadow? All right, let's go. Bum, 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 bum. Check out those logs up on top of that boulder. It's pretty high water when those landed there. Oh, I'd kind of like to take a jacuzzi in that. Too bad it's so late in the day, I'd lay down and just relax for a while. Okay, it's morning day four. We have about 12 miles left to get down to Lee's Ferry. Unfortunately, it's gonna be all through the sun, which is not gonna be fun, but uh, you know what? It'll still be fun. Okay, let's go finish it up. This is the last reliable spring, and it's a decent one. Canyon is starting to really widen up. Another leftover from a big flash flood. It's time for a cool down. That's what I'm talking about. Whoa! Woo! <laughs> <coughs> Hiking the bench trail out. Actually fortunate to have some overcast skies. Helps it keep it kind of cool. Going through the boulders now. Now the canyon's really opening up. Lee's Ferry's out there in the distance. And the wind has started blowing just as I make my way along this sketchy ledge. Whoa. It's down there. Not a place you want to slip and fall, that's for sure. It's actually raining. Normally I'm not a fan of the rain, but uh, this is a very arid, open, exposed stretch that can be really hot in the summertime. So right now I'm actually glad for the rain. It's nice, it's cool and pleasant. Okay, here we go. In that rainstorm, I think we uh, buzzed by some of the good petroglyphs up there, but uh, at least we found some petroglyphs. Check these guys out. Coming over to take a look at this crazy rock and spot a bunch more petroglyphs. Still not the good panels I was hoping to see, but these are still pretty good. All right, coming around the side of this guy and coming to the back side of this rock. Really impressive. And I realize it is one of the rocks I was looking for. This is what's called upside down rock. If you take a look at a lot of the glyphs, they're actually upside down. For instance, See that guy right there? Unless he's hanging from the ceiling, he's upside down. That big horn is upside down. But some are actually right side up. Thought is that boulder used to probably be up there and they put some petroglyphs on it and it rolled down the hill and they continued to carve on it after that. Upside down rock. Very interesting sight. This is what's known as scorpion rock. I'm guessing that's a scorpion right there, maybe. Or maybe that guy right there. I don't think that's a scorpion. Lots of interesting stuff, that's for sure. Cutting down into a new rock layer as we approach the final few miles to Lee's Ferry. We're in the final stretch. Let's take it home.
Last bend above the river. Getting close now. Alright, I am down at Lee's Ferry at the end of the Priya River, thus ending my four day and about 50 mile hike down the lower Perea. It was a good one, a lot of geological wonder in that area. As always, thanks a lot for following along and I'll see you next time on Across Utah.